The Galaxy A54, in its own right, it is a great smartphone. If this existed six years ago, this would be the top of everyone's smartphone of the year charts. But it doesn't exist in isolation. In 2023, there is a plethora of choice. Notwithstanding competitors to Samsung devices, today we'll be comparing the Galaxy A54 to Samsung's better and more attractive relative, the Galaxy S23. Sure, it costs more, and if something happened to it, you would be devastated. But it's more premium design materials, and just all around better internals just might sway you. But if you can't be tempted, you might just want to know, what exactly would I be missing if I chose the A54 over the Galaxy S23? Let's go. Welcome back everybody to Tech With Benefits. Daniel here, and today's video, we bring you a huge comparison between the Galaxy A54 and the Galaxy S23. This video is going to cover everything from the unboxing all the way through to the use of the camera and the differences there. So make sure you stick around, I'll put chapters in. It is a long video, but let's kick it off by looking at the unboxing. Immediately, the first thing you notice is the appearance of the box. The A54 is a slightly glossy white finish, which Samsung sort of give to their not as premium devices. And the picture on the box is like a marketing hero's picture. Whereas the S23, you've got this matte black premium finish on it with a very nondescript picture of the phone and the color that you're getting. Turning it around and actually starting to unbox it, the A54, you get the very traditional product seals, which you use a knife. Some people enjoy that. So that's still there. Whereas the S23, it's advanced itself to what I feel is the much better implementation because you don't need anything, the pull tabs. Simply yank it and sort of swiftly pull it open and you're in your phone. Underneath the lid, you do have uh, your paperwork and also your charging cable. The presentation of those is, is different. There's a bit more attention to detail with the S23 where it's all sort of compartmentalized a little bit nicer, whereas it's just sort of hanging loose in the box with the A54. To the presentation of the phone, the S23 has got this nice black cardboard sort of protecting the back glass, whereas the A54 is just wrapped in a bit of plastic. So when you lift those phones out of there, you do unwrap the plastic in the A54 and it is satisfying. Whereas the S23, you've got the nice peel on the front glass, which is definitely the best way to start off life with a new phone. So in terms of unboxings, it's very clear that the S23 does get a bit more attention to detail. However, the A54, whilst it's still not as, as nice and as premium, it still does appear and bring in a, a, a nice experience to start off life with a new smartphone. And of course, I shouldn't have to point out, but both phones, no charger in the box. Now I've got the phones out, we can start to look at their design. And of course, again, with the price difference, the way these are, $799, $449, you will understandably see a bit of a different design aesthetic. Looking at them side by side, you'll actually see that they are quite similar in appearance. A lot of that's down to the fact that Samsung is unifying their camera design language this year. In terms of materials, that is where things take a bit of a turn. The A54 has upgraded to Gorilla Glass 5 on the back as well as the front. So you do have, uh, I guess, more premium materials versus the plastic. However, I'm a little bit disappointed that they've ditched the matte finish from the A53. So the A54 has a glossy back, albeit glass versus plastic, Although some people might see that as a downgrade. Whereas the S23 has got Gorilla Glass Victus 2 front and back, which makes for a much more durable smartphone. And the matte finish does make it feel a lot more premium. It's a bit more soft to touch as well. And you won't see fingerprints. Around the frames, the A52 is slightly thicker as a phone. So you do notice that the frame looks thicker and the S23 has a bit more of a sleeker approach. And of course, there's a size difference. The A54 being 6.4 inches and the S23 being 6.1. But the A54 feels bigger than what it is thanks to its kind of clunky bezels. I'm not saying that bezels should be the reason not to buy a phone. However, in terms of aesthetic and design, the S23 looks sleeker thanks to its more even, symmetrical and thinner bezels around the display. Make of that what you will. Design is purely a subjective opinion. The A54 feels fine in the hand. It doesn't have any problems. The S23 just does feel that bit more sophisticated and a bit more premium, thanks to the materials being used. 
What isn't subjective though is the specs. Now this isn't a channel that's really going to dive deep into specs and like spec comparisons too much. What I will do though is explain where the benefits of certain specifications lie. Starting with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy versus the Exynos 1380 on the A54. There is a huge difference and disparity in these two processes. The flagship S23 with the Snapdragon has the best performance on a Samsung phone ever. All of the things that you want to do with your phone are made snappier, uh, they go through a lot faster, and it lasts a lot longer thanks to the efficiency of the chipset. The Exynos 1380, whilst I haven't myself put it through too much of its paces, although I just started to use it due to a breakage in my S23 Ultra video coming shortly on how I've dealt with that, differences lie in how you get things done. The Galaxy S23 with that 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy just is way quicker at doing tasks such as Adobe Lightroom or exporting video for, in that sort of sense as well. And even when it comes to just launching different applications and games. So you'll find that if you are someone who uses your phone for a lot more things, the S23 will be better suited thanks to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. The Exynos 1380 will be okay. Its performance will still be perfect for basic, normal day-to-day -day smartphone usage. But anything outside of that, heavy gaming, heavy productivity, creativity, you will want the S23. You just will. When we look at the displays of these phones, they both on paper look identical, except for the size. You have full HD plus AMOLED display with adaptive, on A54 anyway, adaptive, 120 hertz refresh rate. Basically identical specs on paper, but the hardware on the S23 takes it up to the next level. Because it's using a dynamic AMOLED 2X display panel versus just a super AMOLED, the differences uh, are quite staggering. The A54 will get a maximum peak brightness of 1000 nits in high brightness mode only outdoors, whereas the S23 can go up to 1750 in that same situation. The S23 also has adaptive vision booster, which I explained in my S23 Ultra vs Note 20 Ultra video what that does, which means it will calibrate the colors to suit the different brightness levels as it sort of scales it up to high brightness mode. So everything is going to be more accurate. Dynamic AMOLED 2 is just a, a better panel. There's better technology in it, better hardware to produce better colors and also be more efficient. It's more efficient display versus what is on the A54. That's not to say the A54 is bad. AMOLED's a great panel no matter what sort of variation you get. You'll be happy with it. It's just the second you want to do a little bit more advanced display stuff, the S23 has a beat hands down. Something a little bit left of feel to that is the haptics. So it's been a big complaint of the A-series for a long time. The vibration feedback, awful. Like it's just this clunky old vibration motor that just does not produce any sort of tactile satisfaction whatsoever. However, the A54 has brought the satisfaction levels back up to speed with and in line with the S23. So you will actually get to feel a really nice varying levels of vibration and it's very similar and on par with the S23 so that's something that you might be aware of and might like to know that you don't miss that. What is a little bit of a different approach is that they both have on under display fingerprint scanners however the A54 uses optical whereas the S23 uses ultrasonic. They both unlock the phone they're both fast the optical however just uses a camera through the display, whereas the ultrasonic is using like little ultrasonic pulses to recognize your fingerprint. The camera needs a light to see, whereas the S23, it doesn't need any light source whatsoever. So it can be pitch black. You can put the screen, your finger on the screen and it'll unlock. You'll also find with ultrasonic too, if you've got lightly sort of wet hands, it'll still be able to unlock it. The next big difference between these two phones is their batteries. The A54 is a battery monster with 5,000 milliamp hours packed into it versus just the 3,900 on the S23. Whilst on paper, you think that's a big win for the A54, the S23 with its efficient processor still provides you with a very, very good battery life. So don't be stressed out by going the S23 on, and might maybe having bad battery, because I don't think that'll be the case. A54 will give you good battery life because it's just got a big battery. The processor is also not as powerful, so you probably won't have to stress too much about that. And something I've long held the thought of is that you're not likely to do heavy stuff on your A54, so it won't draw from the battery as much, which 
can give it longer battery life again. So you'll probably get two days out of your A54 nose problem, whereas the S23, depending on your usage, between a day and a day and a half. They both support 25 watt fast charging, if it can still be called fast at 25 watt. The S23 supports 15 watt wireless charging, whereas the A54 has no wireless charging to speak of. So if you are someone who loves wireless charging, the S23 will probably be worth the investment. I do think it's a bit of a misstep from Samsung not to put in wireless charging on the A54, even if it was just five watt or 10 watt wireless charging, and you don't have to put power share in. Because the S23, you can reverse wireless charge. If you just leave that out of the A54, that still gives a bit of an upgrade path. But for whatever reason, they didn't do it. Turning our attention to the software. This is where things can start. You think what things might start to get a little bit more separated. However, Samsung has worked really hard in the last probably five years in making One UI a very seamless experience across all of their devices and they had to because they make a lot of phones very quickly samsung can be defined by one ui core which is at the bottom end of their a series and one ui normal which is one ui 5.1 currently on the a54 and s23 and look feature set there's a lot of parity between the two a lot of the same software functions work across A54 and S23. Things like link to Windows, things like call and text on other devices. There's a lot of things that A54 slots in the ecosystem the same way that the S23 does. And if you want to know a little bit more about the Samsung ecosystem, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got a big video planned where I explain everything. Whilst feature set has a lot of parity, the actual usage of One UI 5.1 is where a lot gets left to be desired. The S23, the animations are smooth and snappy and quick. Something I took for, take for granted quite a bit is how fast operating the phone is. You do something, it happens. You navigate through menus, through apps, it does it quickly. The, it speeds through and responds to the way you sort of scroll. The A54, it just doesn't have that. Firstly, scrolling through settings, there's a bit of a weird difference between the coating on the displays. It feels a lot grippier on the A-series, which then also lends itself to making the phone feel slower already. But then the software responds slower. So scrolling through the settings menu, you can see with the S23 side by side with the A54, the difference in the speed of scrolling through settings. But that's not just in settings that it happens. It also happens in the likes of Twitter. I notice it. And even just swiping out of apps, there's a, a bit of a, a hold or a bit of a slight delay. And it does, you do feel it. You, you definitely notice it. And if you use a flagship currently and you're thinking of upgrading to a, a current model, I would probably steer clear because you will notice that difference. However, if you are coming from an A series to a new A series, you probably won't notice the difference. But if you do appreciate that better sort of animation, scrolling feel make the step up it'll be worth it whilst there is parity in features the a54 actually does have some software exclusives in the camera which we're actually got a separate section for so i'll get to that in a moment but there's something called fun mode and that is only on the a54 it does not exist on any other flagship samsung phone so you will not find it and i'll demonstrate what that does and how it works when we get to the camera section other software features though that it doesn't have are kind of big ones, I guess from a productivity standpoint. The S23 has makes use of Samsung DeX. And whilst you get linked to Windows, and that's a great platform and great for the ecosystem, Samsung DeX is just a way of turning your phone into your computer. And S23 has it, A54 doesn't. Fun fact, there was an A-series phone that did have Samsung DeX really targeted towards the enterprise. I know what it is, but I'd be curious to know if you know what it is. So drop a drop a, a line in the comments if you know which A-series phone was inbuilt with Samsung DeX. Some other little stuff that is also missing from the A54 just has to do with like the display. You, you get eye comfort shield, but you don't get the new enhanced comfort option that the S23 has, which basically is just there to give you some more comfort when you're reading text and images at night. It just changes some of the contrast, adjusts things so you feel a lot better when you're reading it at nighttime. A54 doesn't have that. 
Other than those, though, there's a lot of parity, as I said, in terms of the software experience, the core One UI software experience. That is until you get to the camera. So whilst there is that parity on the software side of things, the cameras are really where the S23 starts to separate itself from the Galaxy A54. When we look at the hardware of the two phones, on paper, they actually appear quite similar. You have the 12 megapixel pair of ultra wides on both. You have the 50 megapixel main camera and a slightly different, and by slight I mean there's a lot of difference, you have the 5 megapixel macro on the A54 and the 10 megapixel 3x telephoto on the S23. Those two cameras there don't really compare with each other. They do very different things. The macro can go really close. The 3x telephoto can go and zoom really far. That is probably on paper the big difference, but the other two appear the same. But that is not as it seems because... Whilst the 12 megapixel ultra wides look similar, you have dual pixel autofocus on the base model S23. You don't have that on the 12 megapixel ultra wide on the A54. That dual pixel autofocus just allows for a snappier, faster focusing speed and keeps everything with a bit more detail. The main cameras, both 50 megapixels, that is where, again, on paper, they look the same, even down to the fact that they're using the same size sensor. But that is probably where the differences end. Because whilst the A54 has improved and is using 100% pixel focus, which means every pixel is being used for focusing ability, which does create a faster focusing speed and gives everything in focus a lot quicker. The S23 is using dual pixel autofocus, which is kind of the step above, which, as I've explained in videos before, the dual pixel autofocus just allows for a snappier, faster focusing whilst also maintaining detail in both day and night, because it's using two photodiodes instead of one. Yes, they look similar, but they're not. Turning it around, the selfie cameras, there is a difference. Whilst the higher megapixels on the A54 looks appealing, it does not mean that this, the, the photos coming out of it will be better. In fact, the 12 megapixel dual pixel selfie camera from the S23 is just a better offering. All around. Whilst the hardware, you can see the S23 start to pulling away, that extends even further when you start to compare the modes that are on offer. The Galaxy S23 just has more. Uh, a lot of it's down to the fact you've got a more capable processor and ISP, so it can do more things. Things like director's view and portrait video, you just will not be able to do them, one, because they're not there, and two, because the hardware is not capable of supporting it. So that is where you get more flexibility with the Galaxy S23 and all of their camera modes. And if you actually want to know how to use them, you can pop up here to uh, one of my previous videos where I explain how to use every S23 camera mode that's available. I'll also link it in the description. The A54 is missing those, and even the ones that it has the same, like single take, pro video, they're sort of watered down versions of what the S23 camera modes are. So whilst you get them, you don't get the full-fledged version. Like portrait photos, for example, you get all of the same background effects. However, you can't adjust them until after the photo has been taken. Whereas the S23, you can go in before and actually control what the background looks like so you can get a preview of it before you take your photo. But the A54 does have a camera mode that the S23 doesn't have, and that's fun mode. Fun mode is a collaboration with Snapchat, where Snapchat have provided Samsung with some filters and lenses that actually are integrated into Samsung native camera app through fun mode. Now, Samsung is targeting this phone at first time smartphone users and people who are entering the smartphone market for the first time, and they think that is the younger demographic. In reality, this phone is not being used by that population. It is definitely being used by, by parents, by grandparents, and people who just want a no fuss phone. And whilst it's a fun thing to have, it's not necessarily going to be used by the people that are buying this phone. However, if you are looking at it and you do have maybe kids or grandkids, this will be a great feature for them to be able to utilize if you are people who give your kids your phone to use. Now with the modes out of the way, let's start to take a look at how these phones actually capture photos and the world around them. With the S23, with its processing power, it's it's just better. 
and you can see here with the main camera whilst daytime side by side they look very similar you can start to notice where some hdr differences sort of pop up and where the s23 sort of preserves detail in the shadows and in the highlights a lot better whereas the 854 kind of loses that it makes the shadows a little bit too dark it sort of overexposes the highlights a little bit too much so that's where the differences with this with these two sets of cameras start to really showcase when you actually take the photos the same goes with the ultra wide in fact the ultra wide i think the s23 is just far better because it with its dual pixel autofocus it can capture everything a lot cleaner with a lot more detail whereas the a54 tends to make everything a bit softer with its ultra wide camera of course as well the s23 has that more flexibility with its telephoto lens the three times camera can go up to 30 times digital zoom and you can see side by side the zoom comparison well it isn't really a comparison the s23 can just go further and preserve more detail at those longer zoom ranges if you do think you need that more flexibility that is the camera to go for but in the a54 with its macro camera has something the s23 can't do in that it can go really close to something and capture a really detailed shot you can see here in this coin that i found on the ground i was able to just go super close to it and i even in another example i was able to capture how close you can get to something and capture it so macro mode on the a54 is exclusive to a54 it does not exist on the s23 so if you like that little bit of a fun creative side Maybe the A54 could be something you want to pick up for that purpose. So portrait mode with the A54 is good, but it's not consistent. The S23 hits every time. Hit, hit, hit. It just really does land its portrait mode. In fact, the S23 is one of the best portrait modes you can get on a smartphone right now. The A54 takes a lot of, I guess, that knowledge from S23, but it just doesn't bring consistency. It can hit, then it can miss, and then it can hit, then it can miss, and then it might miss again, then it might hit again. You just don't know. And if you have the patience, you can probably get a good photo eventually. Whereas the S23, you will get one every single time. That also extends itself into night portraits. The S23 actually has a dedicated night portrait function, which means that it'll uh, take a multitude of photos and stack them together to give you a brighter image. The A54 did okay, but it's just not as bright or as detailed. And that goes for night mode as well. When you're taking photos at night, the S23 just has far better processing. Preserves so much more detail, brightens the image up really nicely, and the A54 just can't hold a candle to it. The S23 just has better detail and takes better photos. The way they do night mode is different too. This is what goes to what I say about watered down versions of camera modes. The S23, you get the full spectrum. It shows you a countdown timer. You can control it a bit better. It even gives you a guide over where to position the photo or to keep it still. The A series, you just have to guess how long it's going to take photos for, and then it'll do the processing and show you the image. So the S23 at night, I would 100% pick that every single time, hands down. But of course, you'd expect that with the price difference. Something else you'd expect with the price difference is video recording. The S23 is just better. The A54 can do some things, like it's got 4K30, which is great. But at 4K30 on the A54, you lose video stabilization. And you can see side by side, it's just a mess. If you were trying to do anything while walking, you can forget about it because it just won't be able to do it properly. The S23 has exceptional levels of stabilization, even at 8K30, which can go all the way up to that. So I would, if you're someone who can, likes a lot of video, not just for the fact that the stabilization is good, but even HDR and the detail in the videos, it's just a better quality of video. You can get some good stuff out of the A54, like this video here of the S23 that I shot, was done with the A54. It does have a nice background sort of bokeh effect because of the sensor size being a little bit larger. So it can give you some good results. It is just limited though. And that's, I guess, what the A-Series does with the camera. It limits some things and the S23 doesn't have those limitations. Something else I really noticed with that is its transition of lenses. I was shocked. When I was taking photos, I thought by now Samsung would have figured out how to make lens transitions in the A-Series the same as the S23, or at least even better than what they were, but they're not. The A54, when you are going from the wide to the ultra wide, it does this blur effect, which steps the camera back. The S23 is smooth, buttery back and forth. And whilst you're taking photos, it's not that big of a deal. But in videos, 
wow. You can lose up to two seconds of your video just from changing the camera from the wide to the ultra wide. Depending on what you're capturing, you can that can be an entire moment because if someone's coming closer to you and you're removing moving backwards, you can miss whatever happened. If transitioning between different lenses and flexibility of video recording is important to you, invest in the S23. It's just going to give you much better video capabilities. It's also really good when it comes to capturing audio. You can see here uh, in the park the difference between the two. So on top of having better video image quality, the audio coming out of the S23 is better than the A54 as well. It's just better at isolating the voice compared to the external environment. It's very windy where I am and the S23 has a set of three microphones that it's using, whereas the A54 doesn't quite have that level of hardware, plus all the software work as well. Thanks me. Flicking around now to the selfie camera. And like I said, there is some hardware differences, but even though the S23 on paper looks worse, in execution, it's far better. It's better at dynamic range, it's better at detail, it's better at focusing, it's better at video. It's just a better selfie camera. Uh, it does better in portrait mode. The cutouts are better. It controls the highlights, the shadows, everything. You can see some examples here from between portrait mode, between normal selfie mode and even selfie video, where the differences lie. So again, if you're someone who cares about selfies, the S23 just does a better job. If you don't really care about selfies, I wouldn't worry too much because the A54 still is capable, but the S23 just does have its advantages, of course. Something with the A54 that I noticed, which really upset me, was its capturing speed. I was trying to capture my son doing his wee wee dance. What I noticed with it though, is that the difference between taking, pressing the shutter button and it actually capturing the photo was seconds. There was a huge delay, very, disheartening to see that because how are you meant to capture the things that are happening properly when that happens so i just i couldn't wrap my head around how it was so slow i don't know whether it's a software thing whether it will need to be an up updated but yeah just be wary that that happens on the a54 and it's not present on the s23 whatsoever you can use single take which i have a video explaining what single take is up here and it is on the a54 you don't always want to need to use that so it'd be better if the a54 just stepped up its game a little bit with its capturing speed. In essence, if you're deciding between these two phones, there's a couple of things you probably need to consider. First one is, what's my smartphone usage like? Am I someone who likes a bit of light social media usage? I go on Facebook, Instagram, a bit of TikTok, a bit of Reels, YouTube Shorts, that kind of thing. A54 will handle that no problem. The S23, of course, will as well, but do you need all that power for those type of tasks? If you then add in a little bit of light photography and some videos of your moments that you have with your family, with your friends, again, the A54, very capable, and you'll be happy with the results that it gives you. If you then want to step up into other smartphone usage behaviors, whether that be a bit more gaming, some productivity, so checking emails, word processing, can't believe I called it word processing in 2023, multitasking, Samsung DeX, if you want to fit your a the S23 or A54 within an ecosystem and heavily use that ecosystem, I would heavily consider upgrading to the S23. Just because the extra power it gives you, the longevity it'll give you, the A54 and S23 both have the same software support, but at the end of that life cycle of software, the S23's hardware is just more capable. So it'll give you more and you'll likely get more features added to it versus the One UI that goes with the A54. So those are things to sort of consider. You know, you want to you want to be able to be creative. You want to be able to be productive. And if that's the case, the S23 just fits better. But that's it for this week. Make sure you subscribe uh, if you're liking what I'm doing. Like this video as well. It lets you, YouTube know that uh, it's a video that people like to watch and coming out with me on my socials. I've got Twitter, I've got Instagram and love a bit of conversation on there. See you in the next video. You.